Hi everyone, it's Jennifer here. Today I am going to be painting a watercolor lighthouse. I am using this New York Central Art Supply 100% a watercolor block. It is 100% cotton. I am using Rosa Gallery Urban Sketcher Kit. Um, their watercolor, I love them so much. I went ahead and I already got the drawing, but this is going to be an ink and wash. So I'm going to set my paint aside for now. And I am going to go over the line work and I am using a Fiber Castell, the Artist Pit Fine Liner. It's a 0.5. So I'm going to... Um, Actually, I'm going to use a Micron 0.1 for the top here. And then now I'm going to go ahead and go to this. It's a thicker. This is thicker. So I want to um, use it on certain spots. And go on back to the Micron. And going over these lines. It's going to be a little bit of a sketchier look, which is what I want. And basically what we're going to, what we're doing is I am trying to practice for plain air pearl. Not to mention I want to start um, some urban sketching. So, I am trying to work on my drawing skills. It is certainly not my strong suit. And so, I think we're going to go ahead and go back. I want to go back over this line because I want it to be um, thicker. Some of the lines I want thicker. Some of the lines I want thinner. And I'm finding that I really like doing the ink and wash. Um, I'm still learning. So if I get a little quieter, it's because I'm concentrating. It's not going to be perfect. I love watching um, Becky Coy, I think you say her name, for Urban Sketching. And then um, I like also, I've been, I like the Ian Finley and then um, Tara's Sketchy Adventures, I believe it is. I've been watching them and they are so so inspiring and then of course everybody knows Sarah Burns for gouache in her plein air well I'm not sure everybody but I have to say a, a good bit of people now this isn't going to be all the way perfect but I really don't want it to be because it's just for a little sketchy adventure. I got the reference picture off of um, Pinterest. If anybody wants to know, you can get it there. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. It's a door. I find and that's how I like to do the doors and stuff for right now. And I will be speeding up some of this painting so it's not a mile. Well, not that it lasts forever. I'm sure nobody wants to watch a real super long video. But I want it to be enough where you guys can see what I'm doing. It's kind of like that. And then over. And then there was a line here. 
one down here. And I have very shaky hands. You'll get to see that. And these windows are not perfect. I can see already they're off, but that's okay. We're just gonna go with it. Try to make it a little better though, however. Um, I am getting ready to be learning about perspective. I am really looking forward to that. I am working on a commission right now and once my commission is done then I am going to be able to um, practice and learn some of that. I think with my money I get from my commission I want to take a couple either um, some Skillshare or that Domestica classes of Ian Finley has his um, beginner course and I really would like to take that because I want to learn to draw better so I'm trying not to get my head in a way and I'm sorry about that I was used to kind of drawing on a slant oh, and then the light thingy Okay, so now that the sketch is done, we can begin with the watercolor part. Okay, I took some ultramarine blue, which is here, and then I took a little bit of the ultramarine blue, and I mixed some of this um, whirl brown and then just a tad little bit of yellow light. And so I got that mixed up and I'm gonna go ahead and wet my sky. My brush is a little dirty, but that's okay. Because the colors that are on my brush is gonna go into the sky anyway. So it ain't gonna matter. And we are going to do a wet on wet. And the wet on wet, what it is, is when you're taking, um, wetting your paper. It's my, this is my favorite way to do this, guys. But you wet your paper and then you use wet paint. And because this is 100% cotton paper, it's going to work really well. You want to make sure your ink is dry, so hopefully mine is, and if not, we will find out because it will definitely get into the, the painting. So wetting the whole area, now I'm going to throw in some of my colors. Not worrying about the antenna because it is done in ink. And I guess we'll find out and it did not smear so that's good but my favorite type of paper to use for watercolor I have to say is been 100% cotton and I found this 5x7 on the Amazon and I'm leaving a little bit of white patches because we're going to have time to play around with this guy because I'm going to I want it to be a little bit moody so I'm going to add some of this other gray mix in and then I'm going to put it under white because I want to give it effect like maybe it's going to storm And these are one of my favorite types of skies is when they're really moody. Now we're going to make a little bit more of this mix. So mix in some of that ultramarine blue, a little bit of this, not that much, but that's okay. 
take in some more of this and see how it gives it purple well if you look on the color wheel to neutralize purple which is the violet we're going to go straight across and it's yellow and these color wheels are a savior if you can't remember like for me sometimes it's been forever since i feel like i've been in elementary school see it takes it to a brown a really pretty brown but i'm going to add more of this blue a little bit more of this blue see it's good you see this mixing process and now we're a little too blue so I'm going to take some more of this red brown and it's going to take it to that like purplish color again and then just a hair of that cat light a little bit more you want to take a little bit because it's really not going to take much to neutralize it and there we go hopefully our paper is not getting too dry you want to try to make sure you have enough mix because when the paper starts drying then you can't really like i'm pushing it so what we're going to do is i'm going to pause the video i'm going to let my paper dry and then we're going to come back re-wet it and then finish our sky okay so i'm going to go ahead and wrong color take in some of this ultramarine blue before i wet this i want to make sure i have enough this time so make it a good amount of wash there and then we're going to go back okay so now that everything is dry we're going to go ahead and re-wet everything And this way but being careful we don't disturb the under layer too much going a little bit into the lighthouse but that's okay kind of doing this sloppily but that's okay so now that everything's all wet that's the good thing with the 100 percent um cotton paper and that's why i love doing it for skies for me i'm finding that the wet on wet is the easiest way but it depends if you want a hard edge or a soft edge okay for your clouds and stuff and I tend to like a little softer but it's all I think sometimes what you're going for so now that the sky is all wet we're going to begin with that blue again and I'm just going to kind of dab it on and then take in some of this darker color I'm going to go ahead I think I want to put that in the corners because it's gonna give it a one a really moody effect and then two because of the darkness it's gonna bring out the colors also of the lighthouse because of it being lighter in the contrast so now kind of moving down the page And remember as the sky gets lighter or um, goes down towards the horizon it gets lighter in color so moving this is gonna give a really cool effect when it's done and then going down towards the horizon just 
add in a little bit more blue and then just swiping it across and this is why I like using a flat brush for skies against with the ocean because you can get that pretty straight for the horizon line so now we're going to go ahead and let this dry and then we are going to go on to the water okay so off screen um, what i did is i wanted to bring a little bit of light back in here so i just took a little piece of tissue and just kind of dabbed it and it gave it a real cool cloud effect with the gray up here and then still a little bit down in there i think looks really good you have a touch of light trying to peek up through because of the color separating um, with between that red brown shade or not red brown but royal brown it looks like a reddish brown and then um i'm used to using a burnt sienna but i'm really digging this i have to say you guys if you are looking for a affordable urban sketcher kit this is the way to go the only thing is i switched the titanium white which i still have and i switched it out for areolin so at some point i may switch it out again or switch you know to decide to put another color but i am really really liking this set and what i love is they're full pants and the set was like 32 dollars and you know what Let's support the Ukraine, guys. They're over a year in this war effort with Russia, so I want to make sure that we uh, give the Ukraine a lot of support as much as we can. So, that being said, we're going to go on to the water, which is going to be a mixture between the two. And what I want to do first is... I want to go down and I just kind of want to put a really light wash and when I say light I mean light and I'm not wetting it ahead of time just trying to be mindful not to try to get into the lighthouse but these paints they re-wet like a dream i like the color payoff um i like their color choices that they put in here it's not too bad eventually i may want to put like a cobalt turquoise because i love that color and it makes some pretty greens but the greens they give you i can use for a base and then go from there and then stay tuned i did get some roman smalls so i will be doing a review on that before long but taking the paint down but trying to give it an overall effect and then we're going to put in some waves So while this dries, I'm going to go ahead and pause and then come back. Okay, time to put in waves. And towards the back, they're going to be smaller. So I'm taking the flat brush once again and just kind of working it. Where you just maybe just see a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take some of this grayish color as well and kind of work in that, in that in there because basically your water is going to reflect the sky color. So going back to our little bit of blue. If 
but I have been so fascinated with lighthouses that this summer I want to go around in Ohio and take pictures and try to sketch um, on seeing some of the lighthouses. When we were in Texas, I was able to come back and do a sketch, which will be in my sketchbook tour when I get brave enough to show you. Plus, I got a few more pages. I need to get filled out into it. And the sketchbook it's in is strictly for my um, travels, which I'm hoping this summer to do a lot more filming of my travels and the painting with it. I have to say between Becky Coy, um, the other, I think her name is Becky Isua, Isua, I'm not sure how to say her last name, but she's an urban sketcher, and then of course Sarah for plain air. That is all so inspiring and I would love to start doing some more of that. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see where, you know, I can see some of the sceneries and stuff. Okay, but basically working this color in and I'm going to fill it a little bit more. It looks a little bit the same to me. And then another thing that I can do is take in my brush. And actually, I'm going to go with a... I have a real... I'm going to cheat. I have a really, 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 really small... It's a Da Vinci Cosmo Top um, spin. But I had to get them for my commission. So I... I'm going to add a little bit more white. So what you can do is just taking the thirsty brush, which is just a damp brush, dabbing it off there. And I just want to remove just a hair of this color so it looks a little bit more like, like waves. Okay. Got a little bit of that in. Got a little carried away. And so now we're going to do the same on this side. But I'm going to go ahead and speed it up. Okay, now that we got the C done, we're going to go ahead and put some color into behind the space here for the lighthouse. And just lightly going over that. And then I fill that in. Because that will be like a see through, so you're going to want the color of the sky there. Okay. So now that we got that, I want to just make sure everything's all blended. Because we want that to blend in. I am going to take this little brush and then um, I'm going to go ahead and there's like a reddish color. I'm going to go ahead and fill this in like a red because it would be like the light from the beacon and then I think I'm going to make it a little darker. It's going to be a little darker on this side and a little lighter on this side. So, I'm just taking a little bit of the yellow. Trying to combine the two colors. And it's very lightly trying to blend it with a dry brush. And when I say ever so lightly, I mean like, it's almost like I'm tickling it with barely anything on the brush. And then I'm going to take a little bit more on this yellow 
and then kind of come back over and just kind of blending it out. Okay. And then so some of these bits are going to be black. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Taking the black on my palette. Or you can take a couple um, like dark colors, which I might mix it a little bit with that this way it's not like straight on black. I'm going to mix it with some of the brown. And then how I'm going to do this because the light is going to be on this side. And I'm going to try to keep my head not in the picture, but I want to make it darker over here. So then I can take a little water and then kind of pull it over. But I want it to be a little darker yet. So I'm going to take some of the more of this, my dark. And since the paper is wet, the magical thing is going to let the paper do the work for me. And you can kind of remove some of it. Because I want it to be pretty dark on this side, so. There. And that's going to look really nice. So basically doing the same thing with down here. Taking the black. I'm finding that I love doing um, seascapes. It's one of my favorite things to paint. To me, it's just so relaxing. And then kind of doing the same thing and we want to um, blend it out. And then once again, taking some of that mix. See, got a little too high. So take a paper towel and that took care of that. And then we want to take a little bit of water and just kind of smooth that out because like I said we want it to be darker on this side so there making it getting a little darker adding in some of this color in there okay that looks pretty good And then on the reference picture, it shows like a line, like through here. I'm going through the black once again. So rinse and repeat. Mixing some of the color here with it. And then once again, add in the dark on this side, even darker, going over that wet. But if you think that you get it 
you know, a little too dark, what you can always do is take a thirsty brush once again. And wipe some of that color out. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit on this because I think this is a little too dark too. And where you can take a paper towel. Okay. And then I'm going to feather that a little tiny bit. I didn't want that edge. And we can always fix it later. Okay. So now we got keeping the light on this side. I'm going to go ahead and I want to wet my lighthouse. And I'm going to take a bigger brush for this. And we are getting there. Oh, I guess why I have the black too. We can go ahead and this goes black here. Here. And here. And here. And here. A smidge on top. And then on the roof. And right here. The whole roof. And then, of course, once again, stick into the same thing. We want to put our darker color on this side. And just maybe feathering it out a little. And a little bit more of the darker color. We just want to make sure definitely it's you can that you know, you can notice it darker on this side. And that's where a lot of the wet on wet comes in handy because that's how you get these wonderful blending where you barely have to do anything. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we got the house because that's why, but we need highlights. So what I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and wet the lighthouse now <laughs> and you'll see why. First we're going to do this half and on this half we're just going to go ahead and wet the whole thing. We need to add shading. So I'm going to take this color of our sky once again and I am just gonna take it along the side and then Trying to blend it out a little bit. And then if it gone over a little bit too far, which mine has, and I didn't mean to get red in it, but that's okay because this is what I'm going to do because it needed some color highlight on this color because of the sky
we're just going to feather that light out this way. And bringing it over. And then what I want to do is I want to add just a tiny bit of warmth. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of this aerial in, maybe. I'll take a little bit of this aerial in. There we go. Ever so lightly. And I want to really water it down. Actually, maybe some of this yellow ochre. Yeah, like I like the yellow ochre better. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to tab it in. Tap, 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 tap. And you'll see how I blend it out here in a minute. We're just going to tap, 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 tap. Ever so lightly. Because I want it to... And then what I'm going to do is take in some water, but not overly a lot of water. Just taking a soft brush. And just kind of blending it out. And actually with the two colors, that's looking, I really like how that looks. Now, so on this side, we're going to go darker. And once again, we're going to use our mix. Put it in on this side. A little bit darker but down here we're not going to have the light that we do on the other side because we got the house in front of it so then moving on to the little house we want to add the shading here because this side is in the shade And then leaving the front white. So now we got this blue. And I'm going to take some of this green and put it in. Taking some of this yellow ochre, putting it in. And then I'm going to wipe out this middle section because I'm going to want some plain yellow ochre. bit of this real brown okay these are the colors that we'll be using for our grass our grasses and what I like to do first is take a light coat of the green maybe some of the yellow and put down I want to put down a base coat And doing this, it'll make the grass a lot more interesting. Bringing the brush down. I want it to look like it's on a hill. Add in a little bit of the 
just ever so slightly on that color. Muting it down. A little bit more of that yellow ochre color. And then green. Okay, now once this dries, we will go back over and put the actual grasses in. And this painting will be almost done. Okay. Now that it's my, it's dry and we got the base coat, I'm going to take a little bit more of this greenish color, mix in a hair yellow ochre to make sure it is not just straight up, a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of this color here. Now using a little thicker paint for this. We're going to put in our grasses. So starting with this green color. And honestly, I'm just trying to like oh, work down. And leaving the kind of spaces because we're going to let other colors poke through. Now taking some of this yellow, a little bit more of this yellow, kind of dabbing it off. And this is kind of like how I like to do this. Just adding a little bit of color here and there. Kind of like what that was doing over there. Just put that in. Not really rinsing my brush off in between. Putting a little light in front of that. A little light. A little too much, but we can blend that out. And put in a little green here and there. Kind of taking a little time there, slowing it down. Because we want little patches to show here and there of grasses. Taking little grasses up through here, up on the lighthouse. And I say that's pretty good. And then we will let it dry and I will show you the final painting. So this is the final picture. I hope you enjoyed the video if you're still watching. I wish I would not mess with that a little bit. I liked what it was doing, but that's okay. And then the other thing I kind of regret doing is putting that black line there. I think it would have been better off not having that in the distance, but that's okay. Um, let's learn. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And I'm going to go ahead and sign my name to the painting. And then I want to add a couple of birds. So if you like what you see and everything, um, make sure you hit the like. Thanks for watching. See you the next video. Bye everyone.